Hello and welcome to episode 108 of Vokta Gaming. I am your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain, and we're here with game two from IEM Brazil, held in Sao Paulo, starring, first up, our Red Protoss. He is from Team Millennium, operating under the Millennium tag. He is Millennium's Potiguar. And of course, opposing him is our Blue Protoss. He is currently one game up in this best of three. He is Type Real. Ba -ba 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 -bum. So, as you can tell, I had slightly more time before this commentary today, so I know who these players are. Well done, me. So, of course, uh, we have Millennium's Potiguar. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Um, and I still know nothing about him. Um, the only reason I think he's on Team Millennium is because he's using the Millennium tag up here. That is literally the only reason I have to believe he is part of that team. Type Real, however, I should have known about. I have heard of Real before. He is a South Korean player. He's currently living at the Type team house, however, in Germany, which must be really weird. You often see a lot of these foreign players go to Korea, but it's a lot less often that you see South Korean players head to foreign countries to live. As Millennium gets some Scouting's information, this is on the GSL version, uh, the GSL version of Dual Site. This is on GSL's Dual Site. It's pretty much the only version. It is, of course, a two-player map, which can lead to some sexy four-gate shenanigans. I don't think they will, given what we saw from Real yesterday. I don't think he's. Uh, Excuse me, I haven't had much sleep lately. I don't think Real is a four-gate type of player. We may see something like that from Millennium, but I think we're far more likely to see Real try and get a Nexus up, perhaps hiding one over here, or up here at the third, or even just taking something slightly more defensible at the expansion. As we saw yesterday, Millennium with a strong early game, but really losing out to the fast economy of Real in the mid-game. I hesitate to call it late game. I suppose it's Protoss late game because that's pretty much as late as PvP gets. Here, interesting, we see Zealot coming out from there, followed by a Stalker. A lot of players no longer bother to get this Zealot. It's not really that useful. It can't catch probes. Uh, unless you're trying to block off against a 6 pool, really, there is no need to get that Zealot anymore. But as we see, both players got it and then got the Stalker straight afterwards. Millennium right now holding that watchtower. Real is competing for it though. He does have to back up. He's losing shields on that probe. Zealot comes down though. Going to try and take that. The Zealot Stalker here from Millennium are heading in that direction though. Uh, this probe will take this Zernaga watchtower. Obviously, for those of you who are just joining us on Vokta Gaming, uh, if this is your first game... Zelnaga Watchtowers give you vision of the map. Uh, if we look at what Type Real can see now, he can see this whole entire area. Uh, and that's because his unit uncontestedly is stood in proximity to this, what we call Zelnaga Watchtower or the Zelnaga Tower. Uh, I'm talking about that because there's not a lot else to talk about. We have two more gates going down for Real. We obviously have the Twilight Council. So uh, we could be seeing Blink once he gets enough gas. Dark Shrine though. Okay. So that was unexpected. Real not going for the economic build. In fact going to open with a DT rush. Now we have Blink coming from Millennium. So Millennium's going to play pretty much the same as he played last game. Going to get Blink up pretty fast. And likely uh, with this pylon as a forward staging area, mount an observer uh, assisted blink stalker attack into the main. The thing is, this dark shrine's going to finish. Oh, ho, ho, but Millennium spots it. Really nice scout there. Okay, real wanted to hide that, so now we should see a robo bay go up. 
very, very shortly. There it is, the Robo Facility, rather. That goes up straight away. So these DTs are going to be worthless. In fact, does not even bother finishing. Cancels it and immediately goes for a Robo Facility and an expansion. There we go. Now, real plans are all over the place. This is the mark of a good player. Can he adjust? Uh, now, trying an attack that is not going to work. Needs to get the hell out of there. Uh, he can force with that ramp forever and block it, obviously. So, time to go home with that attack, I'm afraid. Real is in real, is in real trouble, essentially. He needs to get the Nexus down and he needs to hold it for a good long while. Because he was looking to get ahead with some DT harass, perhaps even kill him with it. And now, instead, he's forced to get Immortals and an expansion. Now we'll see what's coming out of here. Observer, straight away. Interesting. Ah, there we go, changing the rally. I was just about to call that. I said interesting that uh, he was having it rallied so far away. Given that uh, he thought DTs might be coming. He said going to rally it to the army so that they'll be protected against any DT attack. But of course we know it's not coming because there's no longer a dark shrine here. But he does not know that. Nothing coming out of the Twilight Council. No blink, no charge. So not going to use that at all. Absolute waste of money because of that dark shrine being spotted. Instead, just powering out some immortals and pretty much just stalkers. A couple of sentries to help defend. Millennium pokes up in there with one stalker. Blinks back, reveals that he has blinked. Now this could be a damaging attack. He wants to focus down sentries here. The more sentries you can focus down, the more powerful your army will be. As they use their energy, Guardian Shield's going down. Force Field's going down now. Losing Stalkers. Real is in some trouble now. Millennium is expanding back at home, but it, he blinks up into the base. Killing probes. Could have taken down that Robo. Instead chooses to blink out, I assume. There we go. Perfectly safe. Really nice pressure there from Millennium. Killed a couple of probes, but essentially what he did was just force Real to reassess what he's doing, to defend heavily, and essentially put some pressure on. The more pressure you can put on your opponent, the more likely they are to go on tilt and just fail. Real now gets an observer out. That's not going to do much use, uh, but it is going to be handy, as always. For scouting your opponent, and you've got to be careful in case he has cloaked units. Oh, but Millennium blinks in on top of real stalkers. They're getting a few kills and then retreating again. But no force field's going down. Looks like he's going to go in for the kill right now. Interesting note. He is forced to run away. There are too many immortals there right now. He needs a few of his own. He needs something to take those immortals out. Real is now getting blink. Uh, that's going to help him in the stalker versus stalker battles. This observer is just going to float around here and check. Millennium, meanwhile, uh, Putiguel, rather. I'm just going to keep calling him Millennium for, because it's easier to pronounce and because it's right up there. Uh, is getting charged. Loses an observer there. But is going to attack at this natural again. Killing some probes. And blinking away without properly engaging. I like it. I like it a lot. Getting charged, so you expect to see some zealots being made. Got a few back at home right now. It's just making probes. We shall see if it starts to add more and more zealots. The forward pylon of Real goes down. And it looks like now Real is going to make a push of his own. Has three models, a bunch of stalkers, and one sentry. That's not going to be enough. It might push Millennium back, but if he blinks back, mm, charge is not quite done. But okay, getting Templar Archives, that's going to allow for the High Templar. Adding three more Gateways and two more Assimilators. Millennium should be fine. In fact, uh, Millennium should take this game. Once he spotted those Dark Templar, uh, rather, once he spotted the Dark Shrine and forced Real to cancel. Look at the difference in supply, by the way. 68 to 100 now. Real is falling further and further behind. A few zealots here coming in to do some damage to the probes. 
Uh, three mortals are still back there though, so that's not going to last very long. But a few more probe kills is always nice. And again, it takes Reel's attention away from his own game plan. And now we have a ton of Zealots and a ton of Stalkers here. Charge is done. And four High Templars morphing in now, or warping in rather. Oh, at this location, turning into two Archons. Here we go. This is going to be, I imagine, our last big engagement. Let's take a look at what Reel's got. It all centers on those three Immortals. If he can keep those four Immortals now, if he can keep those alive, he may stand a chance. But he has to keep them alive. And right now they are not positioned well. They're positioned right at the front. Stalkers killing off a pylon without being engaged. And now the Archons come in. Zealot's coming in. Lovely, lovely micro there by Millennium. Lining up his army perfectly. The Zealots are tanking the damage from the Immortals. While the Stalkers and Archons deal it. And the Stalkers are dying too quickly. Millennium blinks forward on top of the Immortals. The Immortals go down. That is the end of the game. There is no way Real is coming back from this. That was a nice try, but the Immortals just did not do enough. And now they are dead. Real has nothing to defend with. 118 supply to 35. And there's the GG. We are going to go into a game three tomorrow. So, of course, you can join me then. As well as that, you can also join me on scforum.eu once I get hold of a friggin' admin to fix the spam problem that is currently occurring there. As well as that, you can join me in StarCraft 2. Character ID is Vokta Gaming. Character code is 553 or 533. I still can never remember. It is one of those two though, so you just keep trying. Don't give up. I'm on most nights from 7. Tonight I'll be on from about half 7 because I need to take a shower because I am really sweaty. So, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow for our final game of this week.